Hi, I'm Martin, and I have a big, big problem. This is the pile. As you can see, I buy way, way too many anime models, and I gotta get these guys out of their boxes. So what am I gonna do? I'm gonna open all these boxes just for you. Welcome to Cape Frenzy. Hi hi! Welcome to episode 7 of Kate Frenzy. If you haven't been here before, I basically open up this box, talk about the figure inside, maybe give a little backstory to the character themselves, and I don't quite know who's in this box, but I do have a guess of who it is, and hopefully I'm dressed the right color for it. And if it's not the same character, then whatever, we just open the box and still talk about the character anyways. Let's get to the unboxing. Alright, so this one comes from us from Ami Ami. And this, ooh, this one's cute. Today's Ami Ami's postcard is this girl right here. How cute. I like this one a lot. Kind of reminds me of Asuka from Evangelion. All right, put this guy down. Okay, moment of truth. Do I have the right model? I do. All right, yo. Today's figure is... My Hero Academia, Age of Heroes, Momo Yaoyorozu. One of my favorite characters. I love Momo. I got the right outfit on. I'm so happy. So let's talk about Momo's box. All right, so let me just take a look here. The box is pretty simple. It's got a picture of Momo on the front. It's got a picture of her on the side. It's got a picture of her on this side as well and a picture of her on this side. On top it says Age of Heroes and on the bottom it just has the information about the figure as usual. Nothing too fancy. This is number 10 in the Age of Hero line. Age of Heroes is supposedly going to be making all the heroes. I don't know if we're actually going to get much out of this. The tape on this, I have to say the tape is really shitty. <laughs> It's got like, like it's like bunched up there, it's bunched up over here, it's bunched up there. Oh, this, the outside doesn't look too pretty with the tape being like that. I'm actually kind of surprised. You would think that with figures like this, they could at least get the tape right. It's a really plain box. So let's give this box a 6 out of 10. It's a pretty crappy box. I think it's worse than Denki's. Interestingly enough, this figure is actually a setup 2. Because on the front it says Age of Heroes, Kreiti, and Deku. That means that uh, these come in pairs, which is kind of interesting. With the Age of Hero line, you have a couple different figures. There's also the Colosseum line, which is like a whole bunch of figures who are people who win competitions. They put these figures through a gauntlet and the winners get made into figures, which is a really cool concept. And then there's also like the Amazing Hero line, which is in the same scale, but in different poses. There's also like the Pocket line, which is like the little short dudes that look kind of like cute little things. Alright, let's open this up. On the top, there's a QR code, just like Denki's box. Alright, get her open. So, we're gone to the packaging. Let's put her box right over here. <laughs> Just like Denki's box, it looks pretty crappy. <laughs> it's got like uh, tape on the front. Uh, she's kind of falling out of the box here. And it's like a coffin again for this figure. Uh, I mean, it's protected with, with cardboard. So I mean, like if something hits it, then the cardboard pretty much protects her from most hits. It's just not very appealing. This figure is cheaper than other figures. It's meant to be like $25.99 or something. But like this kind of packaging isn't the nicest. It could be a lot better. Let's get this just open here. Alright, so we're gonna open this up. This was on the top of like this was closed like this and it was on top of the box like this, just kind of stuffed in there. So this was very hastily done and judging by this and by the taping, whoever did this job did a really poor job 
packaging this figure, so it's gonna lose a ton of points because of that, because it looks like it wasn't cared for at all, it was just thrown into the box. As for Momo, Momo is separated into... Wow, okay, only three bags. You have Momo's head, her body, and her stand, and that's that's it. That's all there is to this figure. This is actually worse than Denki's. So, packaging gets a 5 out of 10. This is a really poorly packaged item. Like, the tape is even like... Hey, this is gonna be really weird to say, but like, it's not smooth. And like, it's not smooth here or on the box. And this was just shoved on the top, like, what the fuck? Hopefully the figure itself is better. So let's just talk about how we get this assembled. So I'm just gonna open it straight across the bag off the bottom. My Momo. Okay. And the stand. So Momo has a small hole right up here. And her head goes into this little slot right here. Okay, simple enough. There's two holes here, two pegs in her f for her feet. All right, it only goes a certain way. And there we have Momo. Now that we have her outer box, let's talk about Momo's stats. Momo is from the Band Presto Bandai line, Age of Heroes. She is number 10 in the line, and she's also part of a set. The set includes her and Deku. She's letter A, Deku's letter B. She stands just over 8 inches in height, and she is $47.75 Canadian, that's with shipping included. This figure came to us from Ami Ami. Oh boy. I'm gonna need a drink for this one. So, the box isn't the greatest, and the packaging looks like a drunk guy put it together. So far, it's not super fantastic. Hopefully the sculpt and the paint fare better on this figure and raise up the score a little bit. Let's talk about the sculpt and the paint. So you may have noticed that I have two other characters with me today. We have Sasuke Kurin and we also have Ryoko Matoi from Kill a Kill. These two characters have something very in common with Momo and you probably already guessed it just by looking at them but they show off a lot of skin. Normally in anime, when you have characters like this, they're basically there for fan service. And that is probably one of the purposes of the designs, but for each of these characters, this design is actually for parodying purposes. In Kill a Kill, for instance, characters have clothing that aren't fully on them because in that world, the life fibers take away your energy and the less clothing you wear the better off you are because the more powerful you become and you're not mind controlled by the life fibers. It's a pretty insane anime and it's very over the top and the whole lack of clothing is a thing about how society holds us down and we should be free to live how we want and so forth. Honestly that is the whole like thing about kill a kill and explains the costuming. Momo's outfit is actually a parody on American comics. Characters like, let's say, DC's Power Girl, who has the boob window. Honestly, she doesn't need a boob window, but they're like, why don't we make her look sexier? Put a boob window on her. I should mention that Momo is 15 or 16 years old because she's in high school. So that's kind of messed up, isn't it? Now that you think about it. But the reason why she's wearing such less clothing is because of her quirk. Do you remember the last video about Genki Kaminari? Quirks are basically when you have a special ability that your character can do. And for Momo, her quirk is creation, which is why her hero name is Creaty. Creaty can create items based on the lipids in her body. So if she has lots of fat and lipid in her body, she can constantly produce animate objects. Non in uh, uh, non <laughs> what am I trying to say here? Inanimate objects are what she can create. Alright, so I know later on Momo gets a cape, and I don't know the reason for that. And obviously it's probably meant to hide her body a bit more so she can like hide her weapons. But then to me, that's kinda like 
She seems like one of those like stalker guys who's on the street and he's just like, hey man, do you want to see what I have underneath my cape? And he just like opens it and there's like all these fucking weapons just drop out and you're just like, holy shit, man. Momo's body has to be revealed because they come out of her skin. So the reason why she's so naked is because she has multiple spots where she can bring out items and that's her quirk, which is why she's naked or just like half naked or like in a swimsuit basically. So that explains her design if you're wondering if you've never seen My Hero Academia. So let's talk about Momo's face. Momo's face, you know, I don't like this face. When I was purchasing this model, the only reason why I purchased this Momo as opposed to the Good Smile Momo is because this Momo was cheaper and also the other one didn't look that fantastic either. I was hoping that the girls would get more push but they're not as popular as the guy line. You know, it's kind of weird because my hero has a very equal amount of female to male characters in that show and it's really weird that we just don't see many girl figures and the girl figures are really expensive but they're not really that impressive and like there's so many waifus in my hero there's like momo there's mina with the acid froppy with her frog abilities i love froppy don't get don't get me started on froppy your gravity with her like gravity defying moves and then we have like Himiko, which is a crazy bitch with a knife, you know, she'll just fucking stab you and take your blood and turn into your body. Serpent Knight girl who turns into a giant dragon and you're just like, what the fuck? So I was worried that Momo wouldn't be produced as much, which meant I only had two choices at the time. Either get the super stupid expensive one or get the easy cheap one, which is this one. And honestly, I was like, I want to figure a Momo, but I don't want to spend that much money. So I bought this one. If a better one comes up, maybe I'll get rid of this one and I'll change it up for the newer one. With certain anime lines, you can kind of tell that certain characters won't get made too often, so it's better to pick up characters when you can or else you'll lose your chance to get them. With Momo's face, it's like not super nice. It doesn't look like Momo. Momo's a very happy character, so the face is kind of confusing because it looks like she's trying to be serious, but she's not all the way serious, so it doesn't really look really nice on the face. And with Momo's character design, the face isn't really interesting because of that, because of how the character's face is so simple. So having her in this expression makes the face look really dull and I don't really like the idea of the face. This is the one thing I like about Momo is her big giant bush of a hair in the back here. I love that. That part is actually incredible. There's tons of design there and there's lots of different layers which makes it look really nice. That's a really important part of Momo's silhouette. So this big ponytail is really nice. I'm glad they did this well. The only problem with the hair is that there is a line that goes across her head sculpt and it's very noticeable which makes it look really bad because you can see it especially it being pure black like this you notice it right away that there's a line going across her hair that is usually what you see on these cheaper models which kind of sucks but I mean this is what you pay for right can't really fault it for that but at the same time I wish it was cleaner so it will probably lose off once of that. Speaking of the head, when you put her head on, the head sculpt, you can see off the side here that the line between the neck and the chin line is extremely noticeable. And because of that, it looks really awkward, especially on the sides of the figure. It just doesn't look clean. And I don't like that either. It makes it look really cheap as well. The neck, I don't know what it is about the neck, but it looks like it's a different color than her skin it looks brighter than the rest of her body so on the back of her head it looks off like i look at it closely it looks the same but the front and back let's say like the shadowing like there's hints of peach like darker peach for her skin but the back of the paint looks like it's not as nice as the front the front looks like there's more effort put into shading but the back looks like it's actually less shaded. So it has this weird like disconnect between the front and the back. That's another thing that I'm really upset about with this figure. This figure looks nice enough for the price of $25.99. It looks really good, 
but there's a lot of issues with the sculpt. For instance, if you look really closely right here, I'll show you a close-up of this little yellow band on her chest. On the yellow band, there is actually an opening where there's a bit of unclean sculpt. If you look on the other side, it's not there. So that is going to lose a point because it's just lazy because one side here is clean, the other side is not. It's not super noticeable, but to me it is, and I don't like that because now I'm going to think about that the entire time. And also, the strap on that same side that has the weird sculpting also doesn't look as clean as the one on the right. Wait, on the left I mean, not the right, the one on the left. So this whole right side, there's something wrong here because the sculpt is not as nice, the paint looks a little shoddy, and the strap also looks like something's wrong with it. So. That's also not super great with the sculpt. There's another weird issue here. The stomach on this side, the stomach is flat. But on this side, it slightly sticks out. And I'll show you right here that on the stomach, it looks really weird because there's this weird rectangle piece that stays sticking out of the stomach. So that's not great either. So far, this model is not the greatest. I'm, I'm finding it hard to talk about what's nice on this figure. The Yao-Yo belt, the Yao-Yo belt is pretty clean and the Yao-Yo leotard is nice. The one thing that I do not like is that the leotard is a dark red as opposed to the bright red that I'm wearing. And I wore this red because Momo's design usually has a really bright red. You can see it in the anime and in the manga. But for some reason, this figure went with the more cinematic dark look. I prefer Momo with the bright red. I think it adds a lot more to the character. Being dark red and having this facial expression just makes the character look more dull. So I don't know if I like that on this either. Paint-wise, I think it would have been better to have the bright red. I think it would have popped better and would have brought more attention to this character. With the combination of the face and the paint job, she looks less exciting as opposed to, let's say, like... Kaminari, who has a nicer look to him because the colors are balanced out with the, ye the bright yellow, right? Because the first thing you stare at with Kaminari is he stare at his hair color because that's the bright yellow patch. And if this was bright red, then it would really bring attention to Momo's design overall because that's her whole body, right? But that's just something that I am not happy about. Some people like the cinematic look. I prefer to be more comic booky, if you could say. Some people actually don't know that Momo carries a book with her. And it's pretty funny when they're like, oh, she has a little bookshelf on her back. And this is actually a really funny prop item. I think it's hilarious, especially the fact that it just stays there and there's like nothing holding it in place. I don't know how it stays in place. Maybe Momo has some kind of secret latch that keeps it in place. The reason why Momo has a book on her back is because Momo, in order to design her items, she needs to know what they are made out of. She can't make any item unless she knows the material composition of the item. One of her hobbies is like she reads encyclopedias. Who reads encyclopedias anymore? People just go on Wikipedia for that stuff, come on! Which makes Momo a very interesting character because she has to be incredibly smart. The book on the back does have issues. There is color bleeding in the corners of the book and the color bleeding goes onto the pages. So that's gonna lose some points in paint as well. I will mention though that the stamp on this one is actually on the bottom right there instead of being like on the back like Denki's model. That makes it look cleaner so I do appreciate that. The stand that the book's on has issues, specifically the edges of the stand. There is a lot of paint coming off the edges. It looks like it's scraped against a lot of things. Have you ever been on Reddit and you went to a forum called Mildly Infuriating? Well, when you look at Momo's hands, they are mildly infuriating. Because if you look really closely, her hands on her waist, but it's not actually on her waist. It's not actually touching her waist. Same with this hand, not actually touching her leg. And that is mildly infuriating because like they didn't put the extra effort of making it rest on the waist or on the side of the leg. And uh, there's just so many things about this figure that just could have been better. You know, I could probably just bend it myself. If you're wondering, take a blow dryer and heat up certain areas and you can bend them into shape so they're actually in 
facing the right way. And this works also for things like joints. My girlfriend Sarah, she had problems with her V statue. His arm wasn't fitting, so she had to like reheat the arm so that the socket would fit properly in the joint. So maybe I might heat these hands so they can sit properly on her legs because I think it's gonna drive me crazy. The legs, the legs are okay. The legs are nice. <laughs> the front of it is shaded nicely. It has a nice weight to them. They do look nice in the front, but as again, on the back, the shading is not super nice. So that's gonna lose some points on the back. The boot's nothing special. It's blacker up on the top of the boot and the bottom of the boot. It's pretty basic in terms of shading, so nothing too special about it. I will mention that on the boot itself, there's a slight issue where there's a like a weird curve just above the line of the boot. It's only on this side that there's this weird curve like indent on the leg. And that takes off another point off the sculpt. So whew, this, oh, this figure, like there's a lot of issues with this one. The base, unlike Kaminari's, it's solid. This is better because you don't see the hand fingerprints on it and she is sticking, she's not falling out. So the base is pretty stable. This is how they keep down the price by having a really simple base, which is fine. If you're just collecting like mass amounts of figures, having a base like this is practically pretty okay. I'm gonna give the sculpt of this figure a 6 out of 10. Like, it's good, but there is so many issues with this. The face, the body being sticking out in weird places, the hands not resting on the thing, the weird lump on the side of the boot. I didn't even talk about the crotch. The crotch, there's a little bit of paint issue there too. For paint, I'm gonna give this guy a 6 out of 10 as well. Yo, honestly though, Momo has really cool powers. Like, if you think about it, she can make anything she can think of as long as she knows what's made out of. Like, could you imagine if she like pulled like, a fucking yacht out of her body and she just fucking dropped the yacht on you from like midair? Like she just jumped in the air and then she just shoved the yacht out of her body and just shoved it on top of you? Like, that would be nuts. Although, I suppose if she were to do that, she'd be really, really big because she needs a lot of fat to create something that huge. Which means she couldn't really jump. Huh. <sighs> poor, poor Momo. The overall score for her appearance is a 6 as well. It's nothing too exciting to write about. I wouldn't want to be like, hey, check out this cool Momo figure I got because she is very unappealing on a lot of different levels. It just doesn't really shout Momo to me. I feel like it should have been a better pose, it should have been more happy, more excited. Maybe the hand should have been on the legs and the waist. So that leaves the final score at... 58%. Oh, that is pretty dire. Maybe it's better off to hold off until a couple years from now, we'll probably get more Momo figures. I want a Figma out of her, I would love to have a Figma of Momo. Especially one with her Matroshka dolls. If you guys enjoyed this review, maybe check out Denki's review. That one fared a lot better than Momo's. Or maybe watch the review about Sunset Shimmer. That model is impressive. That model is super fun. I'll see you again next week after this final message. See ya!